Because I'm a visual art teacher by day, I teach five sections of visual arts, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade at James Lick Middle School in San Francisco. And I also teach after school musical theater. So that's why they got it a little mixed up. Um, so I'm going to give you a speed scan, hopefully, of both projects that I did. Um, James Lick Middle School is in the heart of Noe Valley. Some of you may be familiar with it. Marilyn Corrales, our vice principal, she's here today to help support me, former art teacher. Um, we have about 600 or 650 students. I believe 65% or more speak Spanish as their home language. We also have a dual immersion program where students that are non-speakers and native speakers come together to learn Spanish for half the day. So in my classroom, we speak a lot of Spanglish. A little <laughs> bit of Spanish, a little bit of English, um, and the kids are really, you'll see some of them, they're pretty fascinating. So um, what else do we need to know? Two projects, I'm gonna do it all in the, uh, in the time of one. Over here, you'll see some of the paintings that um, my eighth graders did. I have two sections of eighth grade um, art class. And most of those kids have had me for at least part of the sixth grade, part of the seventh, and then they're trapped with me for the whole year of eighth grade. Um, this year, uh, the school decided to put on a community fundraiser called Loteria Night. Anybody familiar with Loteria? Mm -hmm. It's Mexican bingo, my favorite. So we played a round of Mexican bingo, Loteria, in class. You get a card, and it's filled with all of these images, and you get a little bean. And the person either says a riddle in Spanish or calls out the name of whatever the picture is. And there's pictures that identify instead of numbers. So we played a little session of that. Then we looked at some of the images that were on the Loteria cards. And the kids were like, oh, we kind of like those. And I said, well, good, because we're having a big community event in the cafeteria. And we need you to decorate. And we need some paintings. So fortunately, we've been working on paintings. We've kind of gone through tempera painting. And we were up to... Uh, acrylic painting in eighth grade, which is kind of scary, as Ms. Corral can tell you. We had it everywhere. So um, canvas is a little expensive, so I think Ms. Corral found me a roll of old vinyl uh, to recover chairs with, and we took the back sides of that. They each um, got into pairs, groups. They decided which image they were going to use. Uh, they had to freehand draw their image or use a scaling technique, which we had used before, to enlarge their picture. They decided their color choices, we've gone over color schemes, and then with the idea of looking at um, value, how does light interfere or um, hopefully reflect off of the object. So I think what you're gonna see over there are five or so paintings that hopefully reflect that. Uh, for a culminating project, I had a ton of them, because I have um, 35 kids in two classes. So for our culminating event, we have an auction every year. So I photoshopped the, their pictures, and then I put them together to make them look like a Loteria card. So this is the type of card that you would get and put your bean on it. So here you'll see three, um, three different um, paintings or collages of their group paintings. Okay, that's that one. Real quickly, I have some images here. This year, we, um, I also run musical theater, and this is my 16th year of putting on musical theater in middle schools, my fifth year at this school. And we decided, since we're kind of a bilingual school, we wanted to find a script that was um, conducive or compatible for our population. So I've searched and searched and searched, and I finally found one from um, Walt Disney's Aladdin, and it's a dual language script. So we have English and Spanish running at the same time. So students that were native speakers learned a little bit of English. And students that were in our immersion program or non-speakers learned a little bit of Spanish. And instead of parroting or echoing, which we heard about in our last um, uh, colloquium visit, the students actually kept the dialogue rolling. So somebody would say something in English, and a person would come on and retort in Spanish. And they had to act it out and keep it going. And all the songs were in English and Spanish. So um, there's photos up here. We don't, couldn't get the adapter, but uh, uh, we had 60 kids, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. A lot of them spent all three years with me. Um, actually, though, our lead, two of our leads were 6th uh, graders this year. Mm -hmm. So that's about it. So a little singing and dancing and acting for you and a little painting. Great. And so... Um, Right now is the point at which you might want to ask some 
um, questions of Jake, Jake some uh, clarifying questions about the things he talked about, either in art or in the uh, musical theater piece. So what clarifying questions do you have uh, regarding what he was talking about uh, that you'd like to ask right now? I'd like to know the students that come to the musical sessions this after school, they're yes. self-selected? Yes. They all... So you're probably going to get some fabulous... You get some phenomenal performers. ones. A few of them are... Um, real. Most of the kids all want to be there. And that's the only way it can work with 60 kids and two or three adults. So we hire a music director, and I have a choreographer, our dance teacher, Ms. Vela, did all of our choreography for us. Um, we have a lot of parents in the community, so they help build the sets and um, all that good looking stuff. Yeah. Jake, what, um, how, how did the whole culturally and linguistically responsive pedagogy come into this with your kids? Um, how, how did you approach that with this project? Well, I think this one with the Aladdin uh, Junior bilingual dual language version, just inherently is the two cultures coming together. In fact, everybody that lived in the castle only spoke Spanish, and the common people spoke <laughs> the plebeian English. Um, so that was a cool kind of role reversal. With the painting project, I think it, that's a little bit more embedded, a little bit more indirect. I think the community coming together the Latino population especially coming out for Loteria Night, because it's a tradition. You come out and you wear your finest and you eat good food and you play Loteria. And it was really a cool thing for our non or our what do we call them? Our non-Hispanic or our non-Hispanic families to take part of this cultural um, event. Yeah. Other clarifying questions? Go ahead. Um, how did you, you all discover what was going to be depicted in the paintings and the students? Was that your <coughs> own idea? Or? Well, a lot of them had played Loteria before. Mm -hmm. So there's sets of Loteria cards that you can buy. Of course, a lot of them want to copy. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see I picked one back there, the heart, mm -hmm. uh, the corazón. And this particular girl, they're twins right next to each other. You can see the corazón and the, um, the skull. These two twins decided they wanted to do something a little bit different, and they're um, they're very creative thinkers. So she decided to do a human heart instead of the classic symbol of a heart, and the sister decided to do the skull. But then she decided to decorate the skull as if it were a sugar skull from Dia de los Muertos. Cool. Check out difficult was it? Yeah, move to back. find. Um, how difficult was it to find the script? Okay. Are there others out there? Yeah, that's the hard part for a musical theater. I usually, um, it's very difficult to find scripts, and you get in trouble if you don't pay royalties. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to find a script that I could buy the rights to was very difficult. Um, musical Theater International was one. They do have a few plays, but I think there's only one other in Spanish and English, and... You know, we're waiting for West Side Story because it just came out with Spanish and English, but I can't get a hold of the script yet. So. And somebody said, well, why don't you write one? I said, well, I'd probably work for Walt Disney and not, <laughs> not teach school if I could do that. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And who saw those performances? Uh, well, the whole, most of the school community came out for it. We had four evenings of three evenings, one daytime. And we probably had over 400 people at each of the shows. So quite a few of the family members, and the families really support the program. They, I hit them up for donations, and they give us lots of money to rent the costumes and build the sets. When you're thinking about assessment, and I know this can be challenging, mm -hmm. what types of changes have you seen in youth who either participated in the play or participated in the visual art and the change you've seen in their other academics or the social life in the community of the school <coughs> or that type of uh, difference? That's a good question. Our school has actually um, done quite well in the last few years in the testing. Um, we've uh, upped our scores due to the fact of the hard work of all of the teachers really working on language arts and math. But I also think a key part was uh, bringing the arts in we brought in a full-time dance teacher. I'm a full-time art teacher. We have a full-time music teacher. And so almost every kid in the school has some type of elective every day that has to do with the arts. And we're just firm believers that the arts, 
bring out the best in someone. We don't have any actual um, data that shows the it's correlation. Really show, yeah. It's real hard, but you know, in my heart, and I think Ms. Corral's heart, and all of our hearts at James Lick, we believe that the arts are transformative, and um, I certainly hope we don't lose them. Oh, I didn't know you were at Lick, by the way. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> How's the after school theater program funding? The after school theater program used to be funded through the after school program. This year it was just solely funded by the PTSA. Wonderful. Yeah. What, and what would you say was the average cost to put on the show? These shows are expensive. Yeah, I know. They're yeah. about, by the time you hire everybody and do all, it's, you know, in the thousands mm -hmm. yeah. of dollars. It's certainly nothing like they would put on at um, School of the Arts or something like that. It's not in the tens of thousands, but in the thousands. Jake, I want to ask about the uh, about the paintings. Yeah, that's a big canvas. It is, and it, what I see there represents quite a bit of learning about the media. <laughs> so, how was it a culmination of what they've been learning all through sixth, seventh, and eighth grade? About kind that? of. I mean, most of the about I'd say more than half the kids I had in sixth and seventh grade, and then the other folks just followed suit really quickly. But. Um, yeah, I kind of pushed them. We went through tempera, paint, and how to use that. And we went through color schemes, and I kind of pushed them into this, which it was good. It was an experience for me to learn how to clean up. And just using acrylic paint with middle schoolers is um, kind of a nightmare. But they, you know, they handled it. So give them a challenge and they, an expectation, and they lived up to it. I'm proud of them for doing that. I have another question, too. Were they were they kind of excited when they saw the pieces shrunk down to the size of the Loteria cards? Because they look so much more detailed than they do. Yeah, it was kind of a mixed response. Well, the kids liked it because they came in framed and matted the the glass on that one broke. But yeah, they were excited because they were we were getting ready for our big auction, and so they were more excited that their work was selling, and they wanted to know if they could make <laughs> money from it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think they were excited to see which ones were paired up with others. And I talked to them, well, we kind of wanted a couple of green ones. And, you know, so we, they were, well, why wasn't mine put on that one? And I said, well, let's look at it. So we talked about composition and putting them together and kind of getting away from being a single artist and making a group mm. piece. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of hard for some of them to <laughs> understand because the abstract, you know, concrete, me, 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 me. Mm -hmm. But I think they liked it. What was the social conversation like when they were producing this kind of work? Well, you can come down to my classroom anytime. It's always active and they're always talking and of course I'm eavesdropping and listening all the time. So half the conversations are in Spanish, half are in English. Um, you know, they like playing the game of Loteria, but it's also a real social time for them. So, you know, can you believe they made us wear our uniforms again today? Or will they ever give us a free dress? Or so-and-so's dating so-and-so? And we have a rule they can't use headphones or electronic devices, but those yours, Marilyn. I let them tune in, because sometimes it's really good for them just to tune into their music and get into that place where they're painting. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of them did that. Even though they were working in groups, but one person would be responsible for something, and they would just tune in to their music and work with the paint. Yeah. Can I ask a follow-up question? So you're saying that each of those pieces was done by a group of children. Usually two per canvas. Two per canvas. Oh, okay. Two, maybe sometimes three. You know, where the third person would be like, Hiro would just sit there and monitor things. He was like the, the crew boss. <laughs> He'd make sure the paintbrushes didn't get cleaned or something. <laughs> um, so when we were looking at some of the books, which were really beautiful, um, we saw a lot of day of the dead stuff, altars, and I can't remember the, the boxes that I did with the students. Correct. Did you guys have any opportunities to go into the mission and do some research and see some of the calaveras and stuff out there? Yeah, so you're referring to, there's some books back there that um, from previous years, and I, we're very fortunate to have a local artist, um, Aiko Kunio, who's Ruth Asawa's daughter, who the Ruth Asawa School of the Arts is named after. She's an alum of the school. And she had a nephew and a niece that went through our program. So they've always been coming in and helping us um, magnificent art teacher. So we do an altar every year. Uh, every teacher, well not every teacher, a lot of teachers in the school um, decide to do a project. 
It could be a short story. It could be, I do the sugar skulls out of plaster of Paris. Um, other people make picture frames. Other people bring in photos of loved ones that have passed. Other people bring in the marigolds to scatter around. So every year we do an altar. Uh, two years ago, we took it to the De Young. Aiko kind of got us into the De Young with it. She did wonderful work with all the students. Uh, but to answer your question, I know a few groups, especially the sixth grade, some of those teachers have taken their kids down to 24th in Mission to look at the uh, Dia de los Muertos altars. Yeah, so we do a big thing every year, every fall. Oh, nice. yeah. So what was the, how did the kids decide how to divide up the work, how to come to consensus together, if there are cultural differences, how they, how they bridge that through this work? Well, that is interesting, yeah, to watch all those dynamics um, play out. And, you know, I kept it all up here in my head and, of course, didn't document things like I probably should have. But they did do, um, they had to get together as a team. They had to do a number of thumbnail sketches, so at least three thumbnail sketches of different objects that they would have on their Loteria card. Then they had to make the decision which one they were going to do, and then they had to come up with color schemes. So there was a lot of give and take, and then they had to figure out if we had the right color paint. And if we didn't have the right color paint, they had to figure out how to mix the paint. So there were lots of um, heated conversations mm -hmm. about um, how the workload was distributed, but in general, they're, they're a great class, and they worked really hard together. And if somebody was having a hard time getting the wash on the, um, on the picture right, Somebody else that was good at do, making a wash would help them. So um, it's really neat to see the classes work in that way. Anything else? Well, Jake. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs>